Hi guys, welcome back to yet another fun DIY sailboat refit video here aboard good old Athena. Winter is fast approaching. It could start snowing any day, so it is high time I get started installing a heating system aboard Athena. At the heart of the heating system is this ProHeat X30. This is a variable output hydronic diesel heater, meaning this will heat a fluid that's circulated throughout the boat, and then the air inside of the boat is heated from that fluid. We'll uh, get back to this little guy in much more detail either a little later in this video or in part two. Here aboard Athena we'll have a bunch of these fan heaters. I've got two different sizes here. These are what will take the heat from that fluid that's circulated throughout the boat and put it into the air so it heats the inside of the boat. Instead of using fan heaters we could also have used regular radiators or even in-floor heating but both of those take up well either space or precious headroom, so I've chosen to go with fan heaters. Both of these have fans on the back, and of course those fans are not going to be completely silent. I've tested these and they don't seem overly loud to me, so I think fan heaters is a good compromise considering the limited amount of space here aboard the boat. In the spirit of full transparency, I should mention that the X30 diesel heater and the marine installation kit have been provided to me free of charge by the manufacturer. Everything else for the system, like these tanks, the fan heaters, the plumbing, all of that good stuff that I've purchased myself. Ava and I are going to be spending a lot of time in some cold, dark places. So when adding a heat source to the boat, I think it also makes a lot of sense to insulate the hull. As an example, I've finished this little section here, or that's to say I still need to varnish these wooden slats, and right now they're just held in place by a friction fit. But uh, yeah, this is what the inside of the boat is gonna look like once it's all finished. I'm waiting for more mahogany slats to show up. So over here you can see sort of a half finished section. It's fairly straightforward. It is just a bunch of this green core material here adhered to the hull with thickened epoxy. And then I've added a couple of layers of fiberglass over that. The foam strips are used for securing the wooden slats. And in between the foam strips, I've then added 32 millimeters of Armaflex. The result looks pretty dang spiffy if I do say so myself. But uh, let's move on and take a look at the plumbing. There's a lot of different ways when it comes to plumbing a system like this. And I'm not a plumber, but I've talked to a number of guys just to make sure that what I'm going to do here is not completely wrong. Now having said that, when you ask four people about their opinion about some plumbing, you're bound to get at least five different opinions. Let's start here with the ProHeat X30, the heat source in the system. When the heated fluid exits out the X30, the first thing it's going to encounter is this 16 kilowatt heat exchanger. This is what we'll use for heating hot water here aboard the boat for, for instance, the shower or the galley. We won't have a traditional hot water heater. Instead, we'll be relying on this heat exchanger, which means unlimited hot showers. Uh, just don't tell Ava about that feature. We are, of course, limited by the amount of fresh water we're going to be carrying aboard the boat. But should we ever find ourselves in a marina with a hookup to city water, Ooh, it's going to be a shower palooza. All kidding aside, there are valid reasons for going with a traditional water heater or a heat exchanger like what we're doing here. But if you're going to be putting together a system like this, I highly encourage you to do your own bit of research to see which option you like the best. After the heat exchanger, the next thing we encounter is the first of two manifolds. The two manifolds are connected with a summer valve that is a way of just bypassing all of the fan heaters for when it's summer and we only need hot water and we don't need to heat the boat. The manifolds will allow us to shut off any section of the system for expansion or God forbid fixing leaks. And it will also allow us to feather the flow. Say we want just a little bit less flow going to these two heaters than the two up here. We're going to have two different sizes of fan heaters here aboard the boat. This is the Real Heat 6400 and this is the Real Heat 6000. We're going to have one of these in the saloon, one in the forward cabin, one of these in the head and one of these in the aft cabin. During the winter, the summer valve is of course going to be closed so that all of the fluid goes through the heaters. Once the fluid has made its way back to the second manifold here, the next thing it encounters is the buffer tank. That is this little guy right here. He's a five gallon tank. 
He's got only one job, and that is to increase the amount of fluid that's circulated throughout the system. The fluid is simply just gonna enter one side here and exit out the other side. If you don't have enough volume in your system, you run the risk of the heater cycling on and off all the time. I'm no expert, but I think adding the buffer tank to make absolutely sure that we've got enough volume in the system is gonna extend the service life of the diesel heater and also I've never run this before, so I have no idea if it's loud, if we can hear it here inside of the boat when it's on. If that's the case, having it be just on for a period and then off for a long period is gonna be a lot nicer than having it cycle on and off again all the time. The next thing we encounter is yet another heat exchanger. This one is connected to the generator. This is one of the really cool things about hydronic heating aboard a boat. It is super easy to take advantage of the heat coming out of either your generator or your main engine. With the generator running, the return to the X30 is gonna get a nice little free boost in temperature here that we can then use for heating the rest of the boat. The very last thing that's plumbed into the system is this little guy. He's a three gallon expansion tank. What I'm building here is an open system, so it is very important that this guy is the highest point in the system. It's a week and a half later. I managed to catch some kind of bug and I've basically been out of commission since I shot the first six minutes of this video. Before I got sick, I did manage to get a little bit of work done here in what'll be the technical compartment. I ran the PEX tube for the saloon and the forward cabin as well as the head. And if you look closely up there on the hull, you might just barely be able to see some pieces of plywood. Everything looks so neat and tidy on the diagram I showed you guys a little bit earlier. Finding a spot for all of this stuff in real life is a little bit of a challenge, but uh, this is where the expansion tank is gonna sit. Right below that, I'm gonna mount the two manifolds I mentioned, which is also why there's this forest of pecs poking out here. The X30 diesel heater has connections for what I believe is 19 millimeter or three quarter inch hose. So there's gonna be a little bit of a combination of pecs and hose in this system, which should be perfectly fine. But speaking of the X30, Let's figure out where to mount this. As is evidenced by the slightly less than super beautiful welds on this thing, I've already made a little bracket for the heater. There is an overflowing cup of mounting holes on this thing. There's four here on the top, four on the back, and uh, I believe there's also four on the bottom. The bracket I've made simply just fits here over the top of it lines up with the four holes here on top and two of the holes here on the back. Here in the technical compartment, I've already made a hole for the exhaust for the heater, but since I've made that hole, I've changed my mind. I now wanna mount the heater, not here, but over here. So I'm gonna have to make another little hole. The old hole I can easily patch up, so that's no big deal. The important thing here is that I have enough clearance around the exhaust because that is gonna get insanely hot. I believe the instruction mentions two inches to any flammable material. I believe this little silicon coated insulation sleeve came with the marine installation kit. This is meant for sliding over the exhaust. When I ordered the fan heaters, I came across this slightly beefier alternative. This is wrapped around the exhaust and then it's laced together with some stainless wire. And uh, I think I'm gonna dimension my hole so that this will fit. If we flip the heater upside down, this is the exhaust. Now directly onto this, I'm gonna mount this little doohickey. This is one part of the condensation trap in the exhaust system. And uh, this is the other part, this spirally looking doodad here. And this mounts inside of here. And uh, this provides a way for condensation to drip out of the exhaust. Unfortunately, the little spirally bit here lines up so that it's perfectly dead in the center of the plywood bulkhead. So uh, my hole through the bulkhead is gonna have to be able to incorporate this little doodad. This is what I was kind of planning on doing, but after copious amounts of head scratching, I think it's gonna be better if I move the heater from up here and then down here. That will make absolutely sure that the expansion tank is always the highest point in the system. That will require me to reroute the hose for the manual bilge pump, but that's not really a big deal. I've also just checked the manual to make sure that I'll have enough service clearance. On this side of the heater, I need 89 millimeters or 3.5 inches worth of clearance to be able to service the heater. After yet more head scratching, this is turning out to be quite the puzzle, I've got the heater blocked up with some Tupperware. I was hoping I wouldn't have to remove this piece of plywood because that's gonna come in useful later on, 
but that is as high as the heater can go with that piece of plywood in place and there is not enough room for the exhaust for the hull which you might just barely be able to see there. Now I've got a little bit more room to work with, things are never straightforward on a boat. I bring you the eight wonder of the world, the floating heater. This is of course just a dry fit. I've got a bunch of sanding to take care of and some painting, but before I get started on that, I wanna drill the hole for the exhaust. I've just double checked and I've got an extra 10 millimeters worth of room here for servicing the heater, so that is awesome. What's not so awesome is over here on the other side. I don't know if you guys will be able to see it, but in here is the hose part where I'm gonna have to attach the hose for the hot water that's coming out of the heater. I know that's gonna be a little bit fiddly to get to, but this is the best location I've been able to come up with for the heater. For drilling the hole through the bulkhead, I've got this delightfully huge hole saw. This will give me roughly two and a half inches worth of clearance around the exhaust. That's a pretty nice looking hole, if I do say so myself. As you can see, there is that little challenge with the condensation trap drain being stuck right in the middle of the plywood. To compensate for that, I think I'm gonna add a spacer to the back of the diesel heater. Just enough to make sure that that little drain clears the bulkhead. A couple of layers of plywood should do the trick. This is an 18 millimeter piece of plywood and a 12 millimeter piece of plywood. If I get these two adhered together, that should do the trick. This is a little bit of epoxy thickened with 406. Now there's gonna be four bolts going through these two pieces of plywood. So gluing them together, I don't think that's really necessary, but it'll certainly make it easier to just get everything lined up. Off camera, I've made some decent progress. I've now got that little spacer glued and screwed to the bulkhead. I've also sanded most of the interior here, so we're basically ready for primer. And I've built a little shelf in this compartment. On that shelf is where I'm gonna install the two heat exchangers. This is one of the insulated boxes for one of those. There's gonna be another one over here. This one is gonna be for the hot water, for the shower, for the galley and so on. And then this one over here is gonna be the one that's connected to the generator. That means I've figured out where everything is gonna go, which was kind of my goal for today. It is only five o'clock, but uh, I'm gonna call it a day because I'm still not at 100%. It's a cold and wet December Sunday morning. I am really hoping I can get the X30 connected and fired up next week so I can get some heat aboard Athena. Today I want to get the fan heaters installed and hopefully also apply some primer in the technical compartment. This beefy looking fan heater right here is going to get installed inside of the settee. Hopefully this guy will be enough to keep the saloon nice and toasty. If not, then we're going to have to add a second one. I've already got two hose barbs on the PEX here to connect it up to the fan heater. So it is just a matter of cutting a hole in the settee and hopefully not messing that up. The plywood cabin sole here is of course not the final cabin sole. There's going to be some kind of flooring that goes on top of this to make it look nice. I don't know what that'll be yet, but I do know that I need to leave enough room underneath the fan heater here for that flooring. I'm going to be mounting two of this size, one here in the saloon and one in the forward cabin. The other one is stuck in customs right now, but I am gonna be mounting two. And because of that, and because I'd like to be able to remove the entire fan heater without messing around with the faceplate here, I've decided to cut a hole so that I can just slide all of this in without having to remove the faceplate. Enter stage left, a trusty paper template. I put a little plus six centimeters here to remind me to put this six centimeters above the existing cabin sole. That will leave me about four centimeters, which is plenty of room for the new cabin sole, plus a little bit of a gap. All that's left now is the scary part of actually cutting the hole. Because of the six centimeter gap down here, I can actually use my jigsaw to cut out this entire hole. That's good because it's a lot quicker to use the jigsaw than something like this oscillating multi-tool. Of course, I need some way of getting the jigsaw started. And for that, the oscillating multi-tool is pretty awesome.
that looks pretty dang spiffy if I do say so myself. And unlike with a radiator or in-floor heating, we don't lose any space here in the saloon. We do lose a little bit of storage though, but I think that's a good compromise. I've repeated the process and added a tiny little fan heater here in the head. There's gonna be a wall here and a door here. So the head and the shower is gonna be a pretty small area. So I think that tiny fan heater is gonna be plenty to keep it nice and toasty in here. The second small fan heater is gonna go here in the aft cabin. As you can see, it's a little bit crammed in there right now. And also before I can add the fan heater in there, I need to sort out the lithium battery situation. And then there is the second large fan heater, which is gonna go in the forward cabin. That, like I think I mentioned, is stuck in customs, but hopefully I'll get that next week. Speaking of next week, I've still got one of the big puzzle pieces left in the puzzle, and that is the exhaust. The heater is installed here on the starboard side of the hull, and there are some recommendations for figuring out the exhaust. For one, I need to stay under 10 feet in length, I need to stay 36 inches above the water, and I can't have more than five 90 degree bends. Basically, that translates into me being able to install the exhaust somewhere right around here, which is not really great because of the dock line, or maybe somewhere here on the transom, which is not really super awesome either because this is where we're going to be going on and off the boat. If you have a suggestion as to where I should place the exhaust through hull, I would love to hear it. So please go ahead and leave a comment down below. I think either of those places could work, but I just don't know which one is the best. I'm going to head up to the workshop to see if I've got a little bit of primer left up there so I can start priming the technical compartment. But unfortunately, I am out of video shooting time for this weekend. One last little note before ending this video. If you are looking for some sail life merch, for Christmas and you want it to arrive before Christmas, now is basically your last chance if you're located in Europe. I believe the cutoff date is December 6th. If you're located in the US, you've got until December 10th. And on that Christmassy note, I'll end this week's video here. I hope to see all of you guys back here aboard Athena next week for yet more DIY fun. Hopefully I'll be feeling a little bit better and uh, maybe if we're lucky, we'll get the X30 fired up. But uh, yeah, we'll see. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below and don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. See you!